So we often get asked questions about restricting navigation. And one of the questions that comes up is, you know, should I be using states or variables for that? Now, we have another video on our YouTube channel on restricting navigation. So I would consider this video as a companion piece to that. So you might want to check that one out first. And then you can come back and check this one out as well. And so often, in this case that you're seeing on the slide, we have someone that's creating an interaction. And in this case, I'm using markers. And built into those markers, we've added uh, states that are the visited state. If you're familiar with how those work, you know, they happen automatically. When you select a marker, it becomes a visited state. And so the way that we've adjusted that over here is a simple trigger pattern that says change the state of the next button to normal when all of those markers are in the state of visited. And so uh, what we didn't tell you is at the beginning, we did set a trigger over here that says set the state of the next button disab to disabled when the timeline starts. So here's how this works. I'm going to preview this scene and show you uh, what's good about it and also the challenges. One of the things that's good about it, it's really just one trigger. Other than they set it to disabled, which you would need anyway. If you come in here, you'll notice the next button is disabled. I select each of these items. Learn about the different knobs on this amp. And then when I'm finished, that changes to normal and I can continue to the next slide. Very simple, very easy. Here's the challenge. Let's say the slide gets revisited. What you'll notice is the next button is disabled. These items are already in their visited state. So I'm trapped here as far as being able to move forward again. Uh, so I would have to do a little bit more work to really make this functional for someone who revisits um, the slide. So let's show you another option that might be um, more efficient. And so this one is using a combination. We're going to still keep the visited states there, but we're also layering a variable in there. So the trigger pattern is very similar. I'll pull this up for you. And what you'll see here, instead of us changing the next button to normal when the state change, we're actually uh, adjusting a variable. And we've created a true-false variable called slide one dash uh, 2-1, and its uh, default value is false, and we're just going to change it to true once all of the states have been visited. So very similar in that process, we have in here, they set the next button to disabled at the timeline uh, beginning, and also set the state of the next button to normal. This time, though, when the timeline starts, if the value is true, this allows us to, when we revisit the slide, come back. And the only other trigger that we really need is when it actually changes to true. Uh, we need this trigger that says set the next button to normal when this variable changes if it equals true. How we created that variable is right up here. And you'll see it is a true-false variable. The default value is false. So what does this do for us? Well, let's play the scene and you can see how it works. you'll see the same experience for the learner. This is disabled. They select each of the options. And where before we had a trigger that said, hey, once all of these are visited, change this to normal. So it feels like the same thing's happening. Really what we were saying is change the variable to true. And with the other trigger that is changing the state of the next button, based on when this variable changes, then you have the result that looks the same as before. The big difference is when we go back and um, preview the slide again, we don't have the issue of being locked out of the slide. So the verdict is states are easy. Um, However, they could create some challenges for you, um, for your user's experience. So maybe using variables uh, along with your states will create a more um, enhanced experience for your end user.